this is Tairo Hassan from Brightline. We are here at the Web Summit and we're having a conversation with De Dean uh, Frank Hoekam uh, uh, from uh, IS uh, Business School. And we'll be talking about the transformation and stakeholder and how we can help organizations transforming themselves and delivering results. So before I just start, let me go back to uh, Dean and ask him uh, basically why uh, you are here at the Web Summit. Yeah, thank you for having me. The, the Web Summit is one of the biggest places where young startup companies and specifically from the tech related sectors are coming together, are working for a few days together, pitch to investors, talk to established technology companies that can give them support and, and where they also meet people that can maybe help them think a little bit about what the future will look like, also in terms of development of these corporations. And I think for us as a business school, it's both a place to learn, to learn about um, what these companies are doing, what uh, their issues are, what they are struggling with, also to meet alumni because many of the founders here are also alumni of the school. And it's also to in, in turn to help them think a little bit about the growth of these companies, about what is going to be important as they manage this corporation going forward. And we just heard you on stage talking about multi-stakeholder management, engagement, and how does it help to, let's say, get business going? Why is it important and how do you get it right? I think this Web Summit is also an interesting place because there are many entrepreneurs here, people in their startup phase, and when you start your own corporation, you have a very clear sense of purpose of what you're trying to achieve, what kind of service, what kind of product you want to offer that maybe does not exist. And therefore what the objective, the meaning of your existence as a corporation really is. And what we've seen is that as companies grow and as they become maybe very successful and big and also age, so new generations come in, it is sometimes is more difficult to maintain. And there needs to be a specific reflection process about how can you maintain the purpose of the company and how can you really be relevant for the different stakeholders that you have. So being the customers and clients, employees in your company, the society as large that you are somehow interacting with in different ways and maybe also the shareholders, obviously, um, shareholders that can be of different type. And making that equation work is not a simple thing. And this was something that we discussed today in the panel. And I think it was inspiring to see young entrepreneurs who have the very clear sense, sense of this. And from there, I think to sort of send the message to more established companies about, okay, think about your roots, how you started, and try to make that a reality now that you're an established company. I hear you talking about the clear sense of purpose, and this is very important. At the same time, of course, when there is that clear sense of purpose, sometimes for organizations to move, there need to be that clear sense of also a sense of urgency because there's no time, or because if you don't move fast enough, someone was sitting in the garage that people say will come over and disrupt your business. How do you create that sense of urgency in organizations so that they can move? For established companies to make an important change, important move is a real challenge. And in fact, you can see how many companies over the past decades or two have ceased to be, exist or at least be leaders in their sector, uh, which shows you that this is not easy to pull off. And in fact, right now, probably the major management challenge for established companies as they manage what we generally call the digital transformation or transformation into a technological age is precisely to make that happen at the Neville organization. And the main ingredient is creating a sense of urgency because in a very natural way, an organization that is large, that has established procedures, there is a tendency to sort of go on doing things as they were done before so far, and in fact, quite successfully done. And creating a sense of urgency sometimes means being very blunt about what the future will look like if this change is not being done. Um, but it also means leading by example so if change needs to take place so that the leadership team in their own actions or maybe also in the way they organize their own work sort of lead by example and show they are willing to change and maybe make important and dramatic changes. 
but it's one of the defining, I think, leadership issues right now in this moment in the beginning of the 21st century. This is quite, quite interesting. And of course, uh, we at Brightline, we released recently what we call a Brightline Transformation Compass. And it's a people-centered transformation compass to help organizations transform themselves. And we heard you many times talking about people and how they are central and important to organizations. What we see, though, many organizations, although they say that people are important, uh, you don't see it in action. When you start peeling the onions, you don't necessarily see people at the center. How do you create a people-centered organization? And how do you use that as a lever to deliver your transformations? I think you need to take a step back and, and realize in, that in the end, any kind of organization is some entity that's made up of people in the first place. It's, it's obvious, but every once in a while you have to repeat that obvious thing. And you have to realize that these people spend most of their working hours at that place, at that organization, or in whichever way they work for, for this kind of organization. So for them, it's also, in a way, the defining element of their own lives beyond their family structures and friends. So if you think about it simply from the, this, this perspective, it's clear that organizations are really about people. And if they want to thrive one way or another, they need to create an environment in which people can thrive. There is no organization that's thriving in which its people are not thriving. It may, for a, for a short time, sort of seem like there's actually good things happening because maybe there are some short-term financial results that are working quite well. But eventually, if this is not really, if this organization is not driven by enthusiastic people who really like to do what they do in the, at the place where they are, that's not going to work. And, and I think that's simple insight if you take a mid to long-term perspective for any kind of leader, uh, sh should, should be obvious.